Ireland is a country which has two official languages. There's Irish, and then there's English. Now you might be thinking, what? English? Why would they speak the language of England and Ireland? This is because English is better than Irish. And when they were peacefully introduced to it, all the Irish people went, ah, we should have just spoken this all along. So much easier. Just a few naysayers here and there refused to modernise and kept speaking this old insular Celtic language. In fact, English is spoken all over the world because it's just so much better than other languages. But that's not what this video is about. Cut to the modern day, in Ireland, most people speak an Irish dialect of English, which is called Hiberno English, or if you for some reason don't speak Latin, Irish English. It's not one uniform dialect, it's a whole set. But what we're interested in is these ones here, in Dublin, or at least some of them, and the super regional accents spoken by some people all over, especially people who are a bit more educated or middle or upper class. Now, if you've heard Irish people speak, you've probably noticed that a lot of them don't say their THs, which is true of some dialects, as in they say t instead of th, and d instead of the. But that's not really true in these dialects I'm talking about. For th, they don't say t, they say t. For th, they don't say d, they say d. Did you catch that? Let's make this a bit interactive. I want you to relax your mouth. And through this whole process, I want you to just use your mouth, okay? Not your throat, not your vocal cords. Now, put the tip of your tongue up on your alveolar ridge. That's the weird, ridgy, bumpy bit just a little bit behind your teeth. Open your mouth slightly as if you're about to speak. Now, take a breath in. Hold it. Keep your tongue in place, and put that air behind your tongue, getting ready to release it. Now, simultaneously, let a burst of air out from your lungs all the way out of your mouth, and release your tongue from the alveolar ridge. Well done. You, hopefully, just made an unvoiced alveolar stop, presumably fairly aspirated, a t sound. And if you didn't listen to me at the start, and decided to vibrate your vocal cords, you probably made a d sound. If you didn't listen to me at all, I'm guessing you made no sound. This kind of sound, where you constrict the airflow completely and then let it out, is called a plosive. You move this place of constriction forward to the lips and you get a p. Move it backwards to the hard palate and you get a k. Uh, voice those, that is, vibrate the vocal cords as you say them, and you get b and g. Like this. Now take that t sound again, with the tip of the tongue on the alveolar ridge. If you move that forward a bit, putting your tongue on the teeth, and then make that exact same sound now, you'll get the unvoiced dental plosive. T. Voice it. Say a d sound, but with your tongue on the teeth, and you'll get a d. It's hard to tell the difference between these if you're not used to it. At least for me, it's way easier to say the difference than to hear it. But they are different sounds. T. T. D. In a lot of languages, these are allophones, often in free variation. That means that you can use whichever one you want, and it doesn't change the meaning, like in British English. If I said take instead of take, people would understand what I meant. They probably wouldn't even realise. But in these dialects I'm talking about, they're not allophonic. They're phonemic. If you switch one for the other, you can get a different word. In Irish English, a den is not the same as den. A tin man is not a tin man. There's loads of sounds like this, which might sound similar, even the same to some speakers, but are obviously completely different to others. It becomes even more difficult when you think about languages that aren't English. In some languages, sh is different and distinct from sh. They even have completely separate symbols in the IPA. This works the other way too. For example, speakers of some languages like Japanese can't easily tell the difference between r and l. But if you think that's ridiculous, then just remember that t and t are different sounds.